In tonight's news, we are in the middle of this pumpkin spice craze. For tonight's story, we're going to take it out to our correspondent, Jane, who's out in the field. Thanks, Amy. We've got pumpkin spice everywhere. We've got Oreos and cereal. Wait, this just in a brand new recipe no one's ever seen or heard of before. We're taking a buttermilk biscuit and turning it into a pumpkin spice biscuit? Can you even believe that? Back to you, Amy. And that recipe is coming right up. I first saw this in a cooking light cookbook and I thought, wow, that's super interesting. So we're gonna give it a go. And this whole recipe will be down below in the description. So we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. I never buy the pumpkin pie pre-made spice mix. I just make my own. I'm just gonna add this to the flour with the salt and the baking powder, and then give that a mix with a fork. Now I'm gonna move on to the wet ingredients. Now I need a third of a cup of buttermilk. And since I never buy buttermilk because I don't seem to use it all up and just end up throwing it away, I like to make my own buttermilk using the trick that my Oma taught me. What that is is taking lemon juice, and I put the lemon juice in first. I'm gonna use one tablespoon. I'm just gonna add milk to that lemon juice until I get to a third of the cup. You can see how it's kind of curdling a little bit. And next I need my pumpkin. Now the recipe is calling for three quarters of a cup of canned pumpkin. So I'm just going to put that into a measuring cup. My husband and I went on a date night. The biscuits were honey buttermilk biscuits and they were to die for it. So I'm gonna add honey to this recipe. And I'm gonna stir my honey together with my pumpkin. Pour my third of a cup of buttermilk in with my pumpkin. Now the last ingredient I need is five tablespoons of butter. You want your butter to be cold and you want this into small cubes because it'll cut down the amount of time that it takes to incorporate it into the flour. I'm gonna take back my flour. So I wanna incorporate the butter into the flour until it looks like it's crumbly. Now you can use a fork to do this, but it does take a long time with a fork. So I bought this little thing and it makes putting the flour and the butter together so much faster. It'll stick. I know it's getting close when that starts to fall off. So this looks about the perfect consistency. I got a few big clumps, but when you, you see when I touch them, they kind of just fall apart. That's exactly what you want it to do. So now I'm ready to add in my wet ingredients. And this is where we want to be really careful where we don't start over mixing that dough. I'm just going to mix it until it just comes together. There, I have barely any white that you could see. So now I'm ready to pat out my dough. Don't be afraid to use a generous amount of flour. I'm gonna take more flour, just sprinkle that on the top. I'm just going to pat this out. When you get like a super sticky part, I just add more flour and kind of pat the flour in together. Now for the real test, I need to fold this over. So I like to use this scraper thing. It's actually a barbecue thing that my husband has, but this really straight edge just helps me to get all that sticky from underneath and flip it. And then I'm gonna sprinkle more flour because I'm gonna pat it out again. And I'm just pressing. Remember, we don't wanna work the dough too much. Instead of flipping this way again, I'm gonna fold it up and just pat that again. I'm gonna take from the other side and flip. And we're just gonna do one more pat, and one more fold, and that's gonna come from the top and flip. And now we're just going to push that out and you want it to be about an inch tall. I like to use the cast iron because it's thicker on the bottom and I don't get it over baked on the bottom before the middle is done. If you don't have a biscuit cutter and you really don't need one, you can use the top of a cup. So I'm just gonna kind of get some flour on there and then I'm going to just cut down the biscuits and just repeat that, sticking them in the cast iron pan and you want them about half an inch apart. So when you get down to just having a little bit of biscuit dough left, all I do is kind of just push it back into a circle and just pat it again. These are usually a little bit uglier than the other ones. It's really satisfying when you cut into the biscuit. I love doing that part. For the last one, I'm just going to just push these together, not even 
worry about using the cup. And this one is gonna be pretty ugly. Okay, these are looking really good and we're gonna bake them for 14 minutes. These have cooled down. I have drizzled them with some honey just to bring out that honey flavor some more. Let's hope it's baked all the way. Springs back a bit. That pumpkin flavor is very subtle, not too sweet, a very good sweet and savory combo. Now that's pumpkin spice that's worth eating. And now back to you, Amy. Wow, those really do look fantastic. Next up, how to make a perfect bread for a party using only two ingredients. And you can catch that story right up here. I'm kind of excited for this recipe because I think it's super weird. This tastes way better than what I was expecting. 